Today on SSU Local, St. Cloud State students share their advice about the rental housing experience. And we also get to see how some St. Cloud State art students started their own art gallery. Stay tuned, SSU Local starts right now. the show that's all about the people, places, and events of Central Minnesota. This is Josh Ackerman, and I'm Daniela Tour, and you are watching SCSU Local. Thanks for checking us out today. Now, the spring months are just around the corner, and that means flowers will be in bloom. Hold on, Josh. We don't need to wait until spring for flowers because we have two local gardens that have gotten a jump start. It may still be winter, but Munsinger and Clemens Gardens are already preparing for the spring. So, what did they do in the winter months, and what are their plans for the spring and summer? Let's take a look to find out. In the winter is basically when we plan our designs for the next year. So this winter we've been working on our designs for the 2011 season. Um, with that we order around 120,000 annuals and about 5,000 perennials. Um, annuals, they die out every year and you have to replace them or perennials will keep coming back. They don't last forever but they'll come back for you know quite a few years before you would have to replace them. Um, with that being said, we work with a plant broker and we place our order with her and let her know everything that we're looking for that year. And she'll keep coming back and saying either this is out of stock or we can have this you know, substituted in a different color. And then so we have to work on um, redesigning it or coming up with a new landscape idea if need be. But we hope that we get everything on the first shot, but that's not always the case. And there's also crop shortages and things like that, or if there's a freeze, and then we have to rethink our ideas for the next summer. Um, also during the winter is when we do all our greenhouse maintenance. We are in a new facility for the last, uh, this will be our third season working out of it. Or second or third season kind of matters when you look at when we moved in. Um, so we're always finding new things that either have to be worked on or maybe fixed or, or new ways of doing things um, with, the, with the greenhouse. Another thing we do in the winter is we have all these tropical plants that we have to take care of. Um, we place them outside during the summers and they're not you know, hardy to our zone. So in the fall time, we bring them back in and we have to still take care of them during the winter. We still have to check them for disease and make sure um, they're doing okay so we can use them again in the summer. Um, these are another tropical plant called Eucomus. They're also known as the pineapple lily. They get a flower when they're in bloom that look a lot like a, a real tall, long cylindrical pineapple um, and we bring these in we plant them out in the summer bring them back in uh, during the winter time and they just keep growing in our greenhouse till we plant them again this summer our we're going to have a main focus of gerber daisies in our rest area informal garden and one thing we're going to shy away from this year too is not doing as many marigolds as we have in the past they can be a high maintenance plant when it comes to always having to deadhead them so this year we're not ordering as many and going to try and use some new uh, nemesias they're called and they have a variety of different colors so we're looking forward to trying some of those out this year you know we order about 120,000, and so if you would come back in um, april or may this building will be full <laughs> right now we have a lot of open tables but it'll be full by the end of um, end of the springtime. Our staffing levels right now we have three full-time people that work uh, year-round so right now there's only three of us um, but come the end of March and April we hire on about 20 to 25 more and those are the ones that you know do all of our summer work and help keep the gardens going. Here we have our calla lilies that we actually grow and sell to a greenhouse um, for their floral displays in the winter so we'll cut these and do deliveries every week so it's a little bit of a revenue boost for us and then in the summer, we also plant these in the garden. So they are a tropical plant. They're not hardy to our zone. So if we were to leave them out all winter long, they would just freeze and not come back. We also supply plants to Barton Park and Whitney Park. Uh, Northway Court is another area we supply plants to. 
and then like the water department, the fire departments, and any of and city hall. The gardens will get into full swing in the next few months as spring nears. It's really interesting to see how early they make plans for the next season. That's something I never really thought about before, but as of right now, we do not have time to sit around and wait for the flowers to bloom. We're going to keep moving along with our show today and take a look at a group on campus and how it relates to a brand new major and a current minor here at St. Cloud State. SCSU will be adding an ethnic studies major in the future. We visited the American Indian Center to see why being able to major in ethnic studies is important to them. There is not a major in American Indian Studies at this point, it is a minor, and, uh, but there are 34 students that are admitted in the program. In the future, we hope to uh, add an Ethnic Studies major, and incorporated in that would be the area studies that are currently minors. They, they, we would maintain those minors, but we would um, have an uh, Ethnic Studies major. The new um, restructuring and with the ethnic studies major. Um, the, the importance of having an American Indian Studies minor, we've always had a minor. I'm part of the, um, um, what do you say, advisory group to that minor. Um, the faculty have done a wonderful job offering courses in American Indian Studies. The minor is important to natives as well as non-natives um, to learn about um, the different perspectives and in a lot of the tribes. Um, there are so many tribes here in the United States that it's, um, um, it's important to realize the differences and similarities between all the tribes. What's important is that um, our campus recognizes the sovereignty of American Indians, and by that they give us uh, our own building, three full-time staff, um, a GA, a couple small budgets, but there are 152 American Indian students who self-identify um, out of 18,000 students. And so that is the group that we work with. And besides that, we offer outreach by doing programs, social programs and cultural programs for the rest of the community. So everybody is welcomed at the Indian Center. We sometimes bring elders to the campus and we bring educators from the reservations to come here to provide the culture. We are not a um, Ojibwe Center, we're not a Dakota Center or um, Ottawa Center, we are American Indian Center. So we're open to all the um, cultures and there's many, there's 600 different cultures of American Indian here in the United States. And I think that's what people need to realize, that um, all the Indian tribes that were here are not here anymore, but the ones that are still here, the ones that are federally recognized, the state recognized, they need to see the diversity within American Indian communities. Students on our campus and everywhere are not getting that education in K-12 and um, they, when they come to campus, we try to provide some of that. I am a senior here undergraduate at St. Cloud State University. I am enrolled with White Earth Reservation. I am half native. See, when I grew up, uh, my mother was the full-blooded Native American Indian in my family. And I just remember her talking about how she lost, how we're losing so much of our culture because of, of our elders passing on. I think that people need to know more about history, the real, the real truth about history. And I think with uh, my people passing on and so forth, I think it does need to be taught and taught the right way. And then the truth needs to be. Um, I think it's so important that we know more truth about our history than, than what's in the textbooks. It is so important to um, um, share and open doors to other cultures to show them who we are. And I mean in different cultures. I think it's so important that the truth comes out. Um, I also think that um, the Native American Indians have so much to offer, um, to teach others. Um, we have lost a lot in our society of how we look at Mother Earth. I just think it's so so important that, um, that we teach and go back to how to preserve what, you know, the, the society we live in and Mother Earth. I just think it's so important. And if we don't start at a young age of teaching, our children, um, it's just gonna get worse. What does the Indian Center have to offer me? Um, hospitality. The American Indian Center is located right on St. Cloud State campus, the Kitty Corner from the Education Building at the intersection of 9th and 4th. 
We all have our own cultures, so being knowledgeable brings awareness along with it. You can learn more about American Indian cultures at the American Indian Center, where community members from all cultures are welcome. But don't go anywhere too fast, because coming up after the break, we get some advice from the renting experts of St. Cloud. And be sure to stick around. We look into how the hardworking students at SCSU keep their bodies fed. SCSU Local, we'll be right back. <laughs> 